welcome back guys so today i have something quite exciting well for me it's exciting anyway i found these metallic watercolors in the range for one pound and i've seen similar things like this before from um uh, what are they called from karataki they do some metallic watercolors and they're about 10 pounds i think on amazon which is still all right to me that's still quite a good price but for a pound i thought let's just test them out and see what they're like i'm not expecting much to be honest i got two packs they only had these two say only but you get quite a good color range between the two of them the two different color ranges and they also come in these nice pounds they are almost like these karataki ones i've seen like a dupe version so again i'm not expecting loads because um they are cheap and usually you get what you pay for with art supplies so but i just thought we'll give it a go so i've done off camera i've done a little drawing for us to paint and also with these usually with these paints even if you get the really good ones a lot of the time they need layering with like normal colors so i have got my little watercolor palette in case i need it some brushes and a jar of water and i've just used watercolor paper to do my sketch on also i wanted to show you while i was at the range i got these five pound which again is a real bargain and these are actually branded winter and newton i looked on amazon and they're about 17 pounds on amazon so i'm not a big acrylic user but i thought for that price I'm, i might as well give them a try Colour range isn't amazing, but you get all the basics, so you can mix your own colours, which you probably end up doing anyway. Even if you've got the biggest colour set, you're probably going to end up mixing your own colours. So if you're confident enough to do colour mixing, that is a great set. And acrylics you can use for anything. These are art ones, but you could use them for craft things as well, um, like the, the rainbow painting I did. You could use them for that. You know, so for £5, it's it's not bad at all so what my idea was just wanted to do something quite simple i've done this um moth and i use i use some different reference images for this so i used one reference image to get the shape then i kind of looked at different patterns of a moth but i wanted it to be quite stylized so obviously you probably never see a moth like this in real life but it's an illustration so that's kind of the beauty of it can be a bit imaginative and i wanted to add some little celestial elements so i added the moons so that's what i did now i did do a few different designs not really i don't really like this one this one's okay but this one was definitely my favorite so i've gone ahead and copied it out onto a bigger sheet and we can try this but i do want to swatch these first just to see what they're like so let's open the other pack as well i'm keeping the camera quite close here because it seems to focus better so i'm not zooming out too much i do also have some colored pencils because when i use watercolor which isn't very often because i do a lot of digital art but i want to get more into using traditional art and watercolors are one of my favorites so yeah when i do use watercolor I, I often do like the outlines and stuff and some shading with some pencils as well now these are the best you're gonna get i would say the polychromos pencils but i only have two of these so i brought those and then i also have a variety of other pencils in here which some are water soluble some aren't so i have to be careful as to the water soluble ones you're not going to want to use before you're doing any watercolour and you're going to want to do them last because otherwise they'll activate and, unless that's what you want of course but if you're just doing outlines and stuff you're probably not going to want them to activate so that's what i've got now let's just use a pretty standard brush first i really don't know what these are going to be like i've not tested them beforehand i've literally just got them out now so we'll try and keep what i'm doing in frame this brush isn't very clean that's not very good just get that clean and i'd say for 
now add plenty of water to get it really activated and you can always dry it out a bit later obviously the more water you add the less pigmented it's going to be but you're going to want some water to get it activated so you can see it's pretty dark on the brush oh that is quite a pleasant surprise it's very opaque which for watercolor you you might not necessarily want but like i say i'm sure if you start adding some more water to it i'm quite pleasantly surprised obviously we'll have to see how it dries yeah i mean the more water you add to it it's getting kind of thin which you would expect but not a good kind of thing i'm thinking but i don't know maybe i'm just being very pessimistic about these yeah it's uh, we'll see let's go ahead and swatch them all so i mean that was the darkest color there so that could be why as well and how the gold is gonna hold up Actually, quite pleasantly surprised. I've not. I'm not particularly. I mean, I'm not an expert, so you know that's something to bear in mind as well. I just dabble in stuff like this. Hmm, I like it where it's solid. When you start adding water, it gets a little bit... I don't know what the word is. It starts looking a bit cheaper and a bit... Not very good, but let's carry on. Let's not judge the paints yet. Yeah, again, it's a little bit muddy almost. I don't know whether that's because I've not washed the brush properly. It could be that you just have to layer them up a bit. So after a coat, if you put on another layer, it might look a bit better. Which you, you're going to expect with cheaper watercolours. You might have to do a bit more work. But we shall see. We'll just have a go with them and see. This is a nice pink. Oh, that purple looks exciting. Yeah, they're definitely all right. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say straight away they're really bad. I just don't know if this is going to be something that I would want to use particularly. I might use the gold in places, but whether I do a whole illustration with <clears throat> these particular paints, I don't know. But even if for a pound, even if they're just like part of you, you talk it, that's pretty good for a pound for all of these colours. Yeah. You can mix these. So I like more pastel colours, so mixing that purple with the pearly white I've got here might look quite nice. Oh, this looks like it could be nice. It's quite a nice copper. I have a feeling those two golds might be the same. These two here, which is fair enough. I mean, you do sometimes get overlaps with colours and in... 
This one's quite washy, but that's not to say it's bad. It might be quite a nice base layer to lay down. Same with this one. I mean, you can hardly see it, but there probably is a place for it. I actually quite like that one. Quite a nice ivory colour. Yeah, so they I wouldn't say they're bad at all. They could work. This one's nice. Uh, you have to put them into practice and see. They're quite kind of streaky, but that could just because of my haphazard painting. What I do want to try maybe is some just very simple strokes with them. So getting a brush like this maybe. I'm just doing some kind of leaf work, maybe with the green, just seeing how that turns out before we do anything too detailed. quite nice actually it's I mean like I say I'm not I'm not a professional just ignore this one here because that kind of didn't work out but it's not too bad it's quite if you add enough water it's it's quite nice So all I'm doing here is literally just drawing some kind of leafy shapes and connecting them up. And you can use these to create like wreaths and things. But this is kind of just practicing for me. It's not, like I say, I'm not an expert. I still need lots of practice. So it's just really to test out the, the supply. It's not it's not the, the nicest softest stuff to use but it's not bad again it is quite patchy there it's quite grainy it's not flowing like a normal watercolor let's compare it to these Windsor and Newton so again they're not the most expensive but they're also not the cheapest they're kind of like a student grade one so let's see how we get with this and these aren't metallic so it's probably not the best see already I'm feeling like that's so much smoother but I mean it is expected like I say you're not going to get amazing quality with one pound watercolours from the range. I just kind of wanted to see if there are if they're any good at all. And I would say, really, they're not bad. They're not bad. I think you can you can kind of see how much more brighter this looks compared to this is quite dull obviously it's a different color and these are metallic you can't really see the metallic in it either but like I say they're not bad for a pound I wouldn't I wouldn't be complaining about them that gold one's quite nice 
So let's now colour in our moth that we have. So usually what I would do is test the colours first on a smaller kind of thumbnail -y one like this one and just make sure the colours are looking how I want them to. And I try different colours until I get the right kind of combination that I want. But because I don't want to be spending too much time doing this, it's just really to test out the supplies. I'll just go straight in. And I've got my swatches here so I can have a look and think, mm, as a base colour, this kind of creamy one looks nice or whatever. And I like to work from light to dark, so that is probably what I'm going to do. I'm probably going to go with this creamy colour first. So for the majority of... The, the body and the wings. Hmm. I'm a bit scared because I'm quite happy with this drawing, but I've taken a photo of it, so I'll probably just digitise it later anyway. <laughs> That's why I like digital art, because you can always rub out and, you know, go back and fix things, work in layers. You're not committing to anything really, whereas this, you are. But, yeah, I need to get out of my comfort zone a bit. So, um... Yeah, I'm going to put these away for now, these um, actual watercolours. And let's just go with this and see what it's looking like. And I like to do my sketch in a colour where possible because I find graphite is so grey and stark. It just... It always shows through, even once you've painted, especially with something like watercolour. Acrylic, I don't really care because it it's opaque, it'll cover it up. But with watercolour, you're not going to want to see that horrible graphite colour. So I use these pencils. They are erasable because I still like them to be erasable. They are Penta, oh no, Pilot Colour Eno. And I'll link them below if I can. And you can refill them. They're a mechanical pencil. And they come with a little eraser on the top. You can use any eraser. They don't erase as well as graphite. Like, they are going to leave a little bit of a residue. You can see on here. They have left a bit of a residue. But that will get covered up. So, it's, it's not a big deal. So, let's carry on. This is looking quite nice as I'm putting the colour down. I'm taking quite a lot of colour because I just feel like it's going to get very thin if I don't. It almost doesn't feel like a watercolour. It kind of feels a bit more like a, I don't know, like a poster paint or something. It's a bit strange. The thing I find with watercolours, and this is why I'm put off a lot by them, is they don't look that good until you've finished so you can put a wash on and it looks really washed out and it doesn't look very good and you you're off put by that and you might leave it or give up but the more you add to it the better it tends to look and then using the pencils to really define certain areas just adds so much because i still like to get detail in my painting and you can't you can do detail with watercolor but it's very hard with a brush so I like to do it with a pencil or like a even like you can go in with a thin brush and gouache and do it a bit more of an opaque detail but yeah we'll see how this goes you can see it's covering up the pencil quite nicely already Okay, what colour shall we go for next? Maybe the slightly darker one. Actually, I'm thinking for this area, it might be nice to do the grey, like a night sky. So the moon's on like a night sky. -ish. We'll start with a silver, I think. Let's see how that looks. Put 
play about with like wet on wet technique as well so putting the water down first and then adding pigment do just be careful like for example here where i'm getting close to this previous color i don't want to go near that until it's dry really but i'm quite impatient so many a time i've had accidents with that but yeah, ideally you, you, you want to wait until it's dry unless you're trying to do like a wet on wet technique. And to show you in the light these actually are very metallic <laughs> so really quite nice so if you're just wanting that kind of glittery i don't know if you can see it on there but it is is pretty nice so even if you just want to use these for craft purposes if you're doing like some little decor pieces and you want a bit of shine pretty good back to the painting what shall we do next See, with the colours, these aren't the colours I would usually go for and I'm not going to start mixing them today. So, maybe we'll go for goldish. quite a lot of different golds in this palette so I'm thinking to do let's try making a little bit of a pool here and then adding some of the darker one can use the blotchiness to advantage in a way because that creates actually some quite nice texture for a moth so the wings would be kind of scaly like that so this could work what color do we want this because we're going to need to let that dry now to see how it turns out um i'm not crazy about the gray but we could go in and add darker to that as well later should i make this gray or not I don't know if that's going to be sticking out a bit too much. Hmm. Maybe like a bronzy. I honestly, I, this is just winging it now. Like I say, usually I do a thumbnail, but I'm not going to today. I don't know whether I want this bronzy or this bronzy. Let's have a look at the swatch. Which I think this one might be quite nice. Try this other one for the middle body. This might be just a big smush of colours, this, it might not look good at all. But...
And I'm also going to do this kind of frill on the bottom with this colour. But I'm going to use a smaller brush. Something like this always happens when I use watercolour. I get a big blob of water and ruin it, but it's okay because that can be covered up with some shading or something later. That looks like an apple to me. <laughs> it looks like the inside of an apple and like the the skin, but like it's gone weird. <laughs> Funny what you see in your art. This just needs some work now. I do like it. It's just it's it's so blotchy. So with this area here, it's still looking quite washed out. I'm going to go back over it. First of all with the same colour and then we might go in with the slightly darker one and highlight some areas. want to create some shade in here because you can see that these two colours are very similar but actually I'm using this colour here so I might even need to go in with a darker one. It really doesn't look good on camera. <laughs> um, I think that the coloured pencils should hopefully make a difference with this. Let's do the same on this side.
Okay, I feel like I've worked this as much as the paper's going to let me now. It's starting to kind of tear up the paper. Oh, that's a nice shimmer. Starting to tear up the paper a little bit, so I don't want to add too much more in the form of watercolour, but we'll go with the pencils and see if we can get anything a little bit better. It's not amazing. I mean, it's definitely not amazing yet. Um, but let's see what we can do with it i know i've lost some detail i'm not prepared to put that in with the paint i don't think so i'll probably do that with a pencil as well Definitely think this polychromos makes a massive difference just to outline everything it just looks a whole lot better but it's not amazing i'm not gonna lie it's, it's, this is not my finest piece of art by a long shot I didn't think as well I probably would have done a background for this if, I had, if I'd been thinking in which case I wouldn't have done the outline yet but I think this video is going to be long enough as it is so I'm not going to add that right now Okay, I think the polychromis is our best friend here. I think we're going to stick with this. So let's go in and do some of the detail.
Okay, I think it's looking a hell of a lot better now. Again, it's not my finest hour, but it is, I think, pretty good. I think this one saved the day. <laughs> this is polychromos. Saved the day. I can't say that this was created just with the one pound watercolours because it wasn't, like I say, the polychromos was a big factor in making this look half decent. But I think there is a place for these. They are great for layering in some metallic colour and just give them a try. Uh, for a pound, I don't think you can go wrong, really. They're not amazing. Then they're Probably the Kirataki ones are probably a lot better. But if you just want them for little bits and you don't want to be spending the money on the, the fancy ones, definitely give these a try. And if you've got other things, all the good art products that you can use in conjunction with them definitely worth a go i would say so there we go like i said i would have done a background if i'd have thought about it probably the light color just as a little wash and i probably would have just done it kind of a feathered edge around but i'm not going to do that now because yeah it's going to take too long so yeah and this would look quite pretty you could even cut this out and hang it up or something the white obviously takes away from it so I might even cut this out and hang it up or something or maybe scan it in and do something with it. I don't know, but it's pretty nice. I just for I forgot, I've just, I've not done the patterns on here, but to be honest, I don't think it needs it. Every other bit of the wing is patterned, so I think we'll leave that as is. And so, yeah, guys, I hope you like this video. Please like and subscribe if you liked this video so I know where the views are and... I'm going to be doing more stuff like this, trying out some different art supplies and just doing some sketchbook sessions, some chilled art sessions. If you're interested in that, please do subscribe. It means a lot and it really motivates me to carry on making videos. Oh, also, if you try anything like this, so if you've got metallic paints or just anything really, I would love to see it. So tag me on Instagram. It's at kt underscore 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 cosmo. I will link it down below. I'd love to see what you guys create. And if I've inspired you, that would just make me so happy to know that I've inspired some people. So if you get these watercolours, please do give them a try out and let me see what you've created with them. I'm sure you can do better than this. <laughs> but yeah, thanks guys. Bye.